It is not enough merely to know the physiological limits. The men in this aircraft knew they were violating almost every physiological limit in the book. They were on an extended mission, and approximately one hour after takeoff, had experienced uncontrollable heat in the forward compartment. At times during the first 13 hours of flight, the crew was exposed to temperatures estimated at 125 to 160 degrees. It was hot, and the cockpit was like a sweltering oven. You know, the zipper on my flying suit was so hot it burned my fingers even through my gloves. The yoke could hardly be handled, yet the decision had been made to continue the mission. We alternated going downstairs to the navigator station to cool off before going back on duty. And about four hours after the second refueling, my window shattered. And the flight had to be continued without pressurization. Soon after that, the co-pilot began to experience severe stomach cramps. The navigator suffered intense pain in his knee, so we decided to drop down to 12,000 feet. Well, at this point, the flight was in the soup. Everybody was so worn out from fatigue that we all began making errors. A positive fix was difficult to obtain. Fuel consumption was high so high that there was doubt as to whether we could make the next refueling point. Although there was an emergency in the making, we didn't declare it until a little too late. A strip alert tanker was launched, but before contact could be made, we ran out of fuel. The bailout sequence began at 7,000 feet. Five ejected and three bailed out. The aircraft made one complete 360 degree left turn. And crashed into a clear, flat field at approximately a 45 degree angle. Fortunately, only two of the men received major injuries. Cause of the accident? Physiological breakdown as a result of heat, lack of pressurization, and fatigue. 